Haley, it's so great to finally meet you. It has been really extraordinary to watch your career. Oh, thank you. I have been with you actually since the beginning. Uh, I think we're the same age. And so I watched everything uh, you've been in. So it's always like seeing someone like me on screen or seeing someone on screen that I would have been friends with. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, so it's been really fun. I have a lot of fond childhood memories that stick out to me. One of them actually being the many times my mom has taken me to the movies, hence why I love movies so much, all the great times she took me. And a film I begged her to take me to was actually Bogus, starring you and Whoopi Goldberg. No way. Wow. I still have yeah. like the memory in my head of being in the theater with my mom watching it and then just enjoying it. And, um, you know, out of many movies I've seen, Bogus, for some reason, I just, I guess just spending time with my mom. You know, we always, we still go to the movies to this day. And so that is embedded in my memory uh, to this day. Oh, I'm so glad. Yeah. And it's uh, it's so important for our industry, for everybody to, to have those experiences in the actual theater, too. So I really I appreciate that. Yeah. Do you have a film from childhood you saw that has, you know, stuck with you for whatever reason? Film from childhood. Uh, I remember. I remember when the Star Wars special editions came out. I know those are somewhat controversial, but it was very cool to see Star Wars in the theater because one of the Christmas gifts I got when I was like five or six years old was the uh, bundled triple VHS packet with uh, the first three movies, and I watched those on VHS until the tape ran out, basically. So <laughs> I love that. I've kept all the VHSs that our family has had over the years. Um, yeah. So it's always great to have that. Uh, but, you know, so after watching your latest film, Blink Twice, I was stoked to have this opportunity to chat with you. That movie surprised me in so many ways. And Zoe Kravitz and all of you really knocked it out of the park. Oh, thank you. I uh, Zoe is such an impressive person in every way. And uh, upon doing press for this movie, I had to keep checking to make sure I was like this. This is just to be accurate. This is her first movie, right? Because it did not seem like it. She was she was so uh, she's so talented and just has such a clear vision of what she wants to get out of uh, uh, making a movie like that. And it was really inspiring to work with somebody like that. Yeah, and, and a sea of major blockbusters and major IPs really hitting the summer strong. You know, this truly was a big standout for many reasons. Uh, I must say it was actually pretty cool to see um, parts of my own reaction from the film is actually quoted in many of the Blink Twice commercials. So it's kind of cool oh, to really? see that. Yeah. Oh, great. Nice. <laughs> I've only had to post that. <laughs> yeah, it's, there's only been a couple of times. This is the second time it's happened to me, and it was only this year. So, like, this year is, like, really cool. The first one was for Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. I'm a big Ghostbusters fan. And right. I'm actually on the back of the Blu-ray um, for that film. So that's, like, oh, really that's cool. awesome. And then being part of the Blink Twice campaign, I feel so honored and privileged to have a connection with all the great filmmakers like Zoe and your actors like yourself so um i'll say this this is my quote for the whole film after watching i said it's a genre bending exotic ride zoe kravik's uh directorial debut is with a captivating cast keeps you on the edge of your seat the whole time with twists tensions and a tropical vibe blink twice is a must see dude thank you so much <laughs> Couldn't have asked for a better a hit for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been telling everyone to watch it. Uh, but I want to know, like, when you got the script, how did you feel after you read it? And, you know, the script itself also had a different title. Uh, so when you saw that, like, what was going through your head and after you yeah. read the last page? You know, how'd you feel? <laughs> The script I got was called Pussy Island, and it is still a spiritual part of uh, the process of making that movie. That title got us uh, uh, a lot of the way there. Um, but it was a lot of the the things that you described in your review and the feel and the character of this movie. It really came through in the writing, too, that uh, Zoe did with uh, Eric Feigenbaum. And uh, you could just get a sense of the sort of atmosphere that she was going to create on set a big part of that was that she uh very carefully laid out the music choices and when you're reading it you're like oh that song is great but there's no way we're going to get that for the movie because rights are so hard to get and one of the coolest things about it is that she actually got basically her whole playlist that she had written in the script three years ago in the movie and we were listening to her playlist on speakers while we were having the scenes and we were dancing and moving around. And I just think it adds so much to a movie when you have that kind of connection with the, the music that we were hearing and what the audience hears. Yeah, I definitely love the music choices. Everything was just like formulated so perfectly. There's a reason for everything in the film. You know, we're speaking of Zoe Kravitz, 
directorial debut. You know, did she bring any unique approaches to the set that really stood out to you um, as she's directing you? Because you've worked with also a lot of amazing directors. I've been very fortunate. I've had really wonderful experiences and have gotten to see some really great artists uh, work up close. And I would count Zoe among them because she, one of the coolest things is that she has worked as an actor for decades. So she has that understanding of what the actor needs and what the actor's process is like and how to work with a very diverse group of, of people. It's a big uh, cast with a lot of, uh, very different people in it. And she really was able to direct us all and knew what each one of us needed to to do the best that we could. And it's uh, it was a really wonderful thing to see. Yeah, what an experience in the theaters that was. Uh, I wasn't sure what I was getting into, you know, in the beginning of the film. And then, you know, once it all ended, I was like, okay, this is all a masterful film, greatly put together. And, you know, with the original title, I was like, okay, makes sense why it was called that originally. You know, <laughs> you just can't market it really that well uh, with that I title. Think she, was, she was saying in interviews, she was like, that was the first phrase that came into my head when I was writing this and, and the things that I wanted to say. But yes, we all, uh, 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 yes, you can't market a movie with that word uh, around the globe in, in the way that you could market uh, something called Blink Twice. Uh, Octopussy came out in the 60s, so, you know, there's there's some uh, uh, allowance for that. <laughs> that is true. Uh, I saw your video um, that you posted about all the days that y'all spent filming and all the fun stuff, which was super exciting, on location. It seemed like a real vacation, actually, uh, for y'all. But, you know, were there any unexpected moments that came up during filming? Yes. Uh, uh, thank you for mentioning my one second every day video. I was very proud of that. Um, yeah, that's a lot of hard work. Like, that is, <laughs> people need to understand. Uh, I say away try to create as much of like the the, the short form uh, content because it's very hard, and yeah. especially when you film a lot of stuff too. I've been I've I've had one going since then. I I edited that one just to be when we were in Mexico, but I've kept it going for two and a half years now. So now it's like a twenty minute movie. So maybe I'll maybe I'll have a special screening for that. But um, you were asking about unexpected moments and the location that was is chronicled in that video. Uh, it was a challenging place to work. We were way out in the jungle. Uh, it's called Pussy Island, but we were nowhere near the ocean um, and very far away from civilization. Uh, and so there are a lot of practical challenges that come up. If a if a prop isn't there or if something goes wrong, like you can't just pop it into uh, you know the city center to to correct it. You kind of had to solve it on site. And that was one of the things that impressed me so much about Zoe is that weather and the location will will come up and throw unexpected challenges in your way and she was just a very calm hand on the wheel and uh i believe we finished the movie almost on schedule which is pretty good for a movie like that that takes place largely at night and outside <laughs> yeah uh that's very impressive the whole cast is obviously fantastic including you but it does seem like, you know, part of the cast, there's a lot of funny individuals part of the cast, you know? And um, I want to know who was the one making people laugh the most? And also, who did you spend the, the most time with when you weren't filming? It was truly an ensemble feel. Uh, we all lived at the location, so we all got to spend a lot of time together. We took most of our meals together, even days when we weren't working. Um when it comes to the funniest, it's really hard to say. It's a very funny group of people. <laughs> um, and we made each other laugh a lot. Uh, I couldn't give anyone the crown for that because everybody uh, was was funny in their own way. Uh, one, one cool excursion I would highlight is me and Liz and Simon went to Chichen Itza uh, on one of our days off because the three of us weren't working. And that was a really special day. Yeah, uh, I can imagine, to be honest, like Simon, which I follow his career a long time, like he he's naturally the funny would be the funniest or crack. This is his personality in general. But so many people are there. People don't know it. Shanning's very funny. Oh, uh, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> and everyone else is, too. So and um, I actually I spoke, the, I think it was last week with uh, LaVon Hawk for his other oh, film, cool. The Thicket. And I was very impressed with his performance in this film and The Thicket. You know, what did you see in him? Um, you know, he's a young actor, but he's making some really big impressions. He's he's such a talented guy, a really nice guy. Uh, he and I had an excursion in Merida, which is the closest city to where we were shooting in Tamil Zone. And we went to a guitar shop and brought some uh, ukuleles and guitars back to the location because he's a really talented musician as well. 
Um, and yeah, he, he's just such a, um, motivated and inspiring guy and is just always looking for the artistic side of things. And I, I really enjoyed working with him. Yeah. I'm actually excited to see him and more stuff. And it's same with the rest of the cast and seeing Zoe's next film, you know, what she decides to do. I am so curious as, as to what it's going to be. I mean, I'm very excited to see what her next move is because she's really announced herself as a major director to be reckoned with. Yeah. Yeah. She came out so strong. Uh, yeah. She's going to get a lot of phone calls. I'm sure she has to put her phone on silent since that film came out. <laughs> uh, but I do want to ask, ask about this. You know, The Sixth Sense celebrates its 25th anniversary, you know. And I know you get a lot of questions about this movie, so I don't want to even ask really about doing The Sixth Sense. Uh, there's a lot of great stuff from you about it. But I wanted to ask you what your favorite M. Night Shyamalan movie outside of this one? Great question. Uh, I think, hmm. I would have to go with Unbreakable. I think that Unbreakable is a really underrated movie and he kind of got the jump before Marvel or any of those other movies came out. He had his own take on superheroes and Bruce is so wonderful in that movie and you got you got Sam Jackson in it. Um, I think I really love that movie, yeah. <laughs> That's a really good one. I think for me, Signs is very memorable for me because I Signs freaked out fun, so much yeah. in theaters when that scene uh, of the alien walking by. Well, I like that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the great moment. <laughs> All his films are really great. Uh, I watched Trapped. I actually loved Trapped so much. I'm not gotta sure. Gotta go I see that. I might actually go see that tonight. I gotta get into uh, into theaters to see that. Yeah. Yeah. Josh Hartnett <laughs> in that role is brilliant. What a great choice. I love Josh Hartnett. It's been a while since he's been like really, he's re had a resurgence recently, which is great. Yeah. He was in uh, Oppenheimer as yeah. well. Really great in that. Yeah. So I was always a big fan of his uh, growing up, which, um, but yeah, M. Night, such talent and um, his daughters as well. Really amazing yeah, what they're, they're doing. Really uh, I got to talk to her about The Watchers. That's a great film too. And then yeah. obviously his other daughters in, in Trap. I mean, amazing family. I can't believe it. What, what a powerhouse that is. <laughs> also, you lent your voice to the new series, Batman Caped Crusader. That's right. Yeah. I got to screen the the whole series. I loved it. I grew up loving the animated series in the 90s. Uh, was that something you grew up with loving as well? Oh, yeah. I remember when I was in elementary school, I think it was Batman Beyond was in the, the morning block of, of cartoons that I would watch. I think Mark Hamill did the voice of the Joker in that one. That was a really good series. I'm a big Batman fan, so getting to be part of that universe is uh, is pretty fun. <laughs> yeah, I loved your character in uh, Nocturne, and it, it really is a great show, and it's really reminiscent of the old show, but really fresh. Batman Beyond is one of my favorites, I must say, and I really hope they do something live action in the future. Uh, speaking of that Batman, cool. I actually just went to a AMC theater and picked up that uh, Batlight popcorn bucket, uh, which is oh, amazing. Nice. I might have to pull it and show you afterwards. Please uh, do. It's a bat signal that has a light and it opens up and it's a popcorn bucket. Uh, uh, so you might have great. to pick that up if you go see Trap wherever you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, I wanted to ask, you know, with one of your films, AI, you explored some really advanced concepts in that film. With AI becoming such a big topic today, do you ever reflect on how that film was ahead of its time? I really think it was. And I mean, getting to work with with Steven is such a, a gift and such a, a, a wonderful thing to get to do. And I think that when it came out, there was a little bit of a, a misunderstanding from its audience about uh you know because he was it was a collaboration with stanley kubrick i think that people were misattributing different parts of the movie to each creative mind and, and people didn't quite understand it in the way that i think that it's getting understood now its reputation i think has has really grown over the years and i think it's just such a forward thinking movie not just in in terms of the technology that it deals with but the 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 moral questions that it asks and i i just feel so fortunate to have gotten to be part of something that uh, uh kubrick and spielberg worked on and i think i think it was something that he said to either bonnie curtis or, or uh, uh kathleen kennedy who were the producers on the film when people were kind of telling their own stories about what the you know the genesis of the movie was and he's like i'm not going to focus on that i'm just going to focus on making a great movie and he really did 
Yeah. No, it's a fantastic film. And I was just, you know, I spent a lot of time on Twitter or X, or whatever you want to call it. And people are revisiting that film and talking about it now. It's pretty yeah. awesome, you know, that, you know, certain films are getting rewatched or watched for the first time. And some of them are so more relevant today than they were back then. And AI is one of them. And, you know, that's another piece of your work that, you know, this year everyone's talking about. So you've been a part of a lot of great projects. It's yeah, I feel I feel so lucky. And and it's a it's a movie where one of the things that's so great about Steven and uh, uh, directors like Scorsese does this, too. They've been working in this industry for three quarters of a century, but you can see techniques that they're trying out in each movie and getting excited about certain choices and certain new things that they're trying. And you can feel that kind of freshness and and creativity uh, in the movie. And I, particularly in the first act of, of AI, where you're like, wow, the way that he's shooting that house and that relationship between me and Francis O'Connor, um, it's just, it's really incredible. Yeah, I, I need to now go rewatch that. There's a lot of films I on my watch list to go rewatch and feel like the first time watching them again. And that's really what I love, you know, revisiting. I guess you can call them classics now. It's making us feel old, but <laughs> 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 uh, but you know, you also do, you know, we talk about Batman Cape Crusader, voice acting you love doing, which is really cool that you know you're Sora in Kingdom Hearts. And you know, for years you've been doing that. What is it like to have such a beloved character like that under your belt and you know it's a video game which is so cool to also have that underneath your belt it's wild i mean i i love playing video games i don't play them as much as i did when i was a, a teenager or in college uh because man they can really uh take up a lot of your time in a fun way <laughs> after after playing halo 3 in college i was like i cannot keep doing this or this is all i'm going to be doing on the weekends um but uh yeah, I've, I've been doing Kingdom Hearts for almost 25 years. It's the longest relationship I've I've had continuously with the character. And it's it's just such a fun fan base and such a gigantic, expanded, you know, story web and and uh, and universe that they have. I remember when we did Kingdom Hearts 2 in 2005, I came to the voiceover studio and they had this big like uh, poster board showing the timelines and all the interconnected things you're like this is this is fun <laughs> it is one of the coolest video games to ever be made it's so creative and so fun and brings so many franchises together which i what i love about a lot of characters and so yeah. forth i'm just like you i'm a was a big gamer i have every single console you can think of and then it takes out so much of your time you can get like drawn into the video game and it's five hours have passed you know i oh, yeah. used to be yeah i used to be a very <laughs> avid gamer my friend has an 11 year old he's he's been playing uh, uh zelda uh tears of the kingdom i guess the newest one and she's like you have to turn it off you've been playing it for five hours he's like no i've only been playing for 20 minutes she's like no you've been on it for five hours you have to turn it <laughs> off that's the game I've been playing the most lately. Or if you give me a Spider-Man game or a Batman game or Mario or Zelda, I'll be playing a lot of those as well. Yeah. The the PS5 Spider-Man was a really good game. That was really fun. I haven't dived into it yet because I know I wouldn't be doing any work <laughs> 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 on that. Uh, still on voice acting. Uh, I'm in love with that Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous show. It is such an amazing series. And even the continued series. I watched, you know, Chaos Theory. Uh, I honestly think it does amazing things that the films don't do. It's so different and offers a different, you know, way to introduce first Jurassic world to a younger audience and offer a different type of storytelling you don't see in the movies. Uh, were you a fan of Jurassic Park, you know, growing up and how does it feel to be part of such a beloved franchise, which just announced like the new films coming out next year, which is wild. Oh, I didn't uh, hear that. Yeah. Which, uh, which movie is it going to be? It's uh, Jurassic World Rebirth with Garth oh, Edwards oh. and Scarlett Johansson in theaters July of next year. <laughs> and they already have pictures from it. It's wild. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, we, uh, 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 trivia thing, we actually shot most of AI uh, on the same stage, 16 at Warner Brothers, where they shot the t-rex sequence in the first jurassic park the the first jurassic park is is straight up one of my favorite movies and yeah getting to be a part of that uh that story was really fun my character was a uh a real pill in that in that show <laughs> yeah he was one that they had to deal with and uh but that's it's such a great show i keep telling everyone to watch it you know it is definitely worth it they're like how do you do animation with jurassic it works it actually is pretty dark at the same time <laughs> uh, it does not really hold back which is great uh, <laughs> i do want to ask you know you're gonna be part of wednesday season two 
Yeah. Just wanted to know what is it like stepping into the unique world of Tim Burton's Wednesday? Getting to work with with Tim Burton was a dream come true. I'm I'm such a big fan of his and getting to watch him work close up was, was just so exciting. And, uh, that, that whole team they have on that show, I think they really, they bonded a lot working in Romania in the depths of, of COVID. And you can just tell they really care about each other and look after each other and uh, getting to, to fly in and to do some work on that show was really, really fun. I'm going to ask you this. Do you have a favorite Tim Burton film? Oh, uh... I love Beetlejuice. Um, God, it is really hard. It might be Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice is just such a, a fun, you know, free movie. It's great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's. I'm excited for the sequel, catching that next week. Uh, lastly, I wanted to ask you this. Out of all the films you have made, uh, which is one where you tell yourself, I still can't believe I was part of that movie, or I can't believe I actually worked with that individual. I mean, I'd put AI up there. I mean, working with Steven, I mean, I was 12 when we did that movie, but I had already seen all of his movies and he was a, a big part of my childhood and getting to step onto set with him was just something that was uh, uh, really thrilling. Such an amazing filmography you have. Like I said, I've been with you since the beginning where there's, there's too many, too many of the count, too many great projects been part of, and I'm really excited to see more of you. And especially with Blink Twice, you have more stuff. What's next for you? Uh, Wednesday will be coming out next year. I've got a short film uh, that's opening next week at uh, the Toronto Film Festival called um, The Yellow, which was directed by Micah Monroe and Simone Farrow and stars uh, Baron Hinkle. And then uh, I have another short film because it was the only I did a lot of short films in 2023 because we were on strike and it was the only thing we were allowed to do. Uh, I have a short film called Mechanica that is uh, coming out of the Portland Film Festival in October. So those will be the next things. Oh, that's fantastic. I'm definitely going to have to catch those. Uh, Haley, once again, congratulations on such an amazing career and hope we can do this again soon. Thank you so much, man. Nice talking to you. 